All right, and news for the run. But before we jump into that, want to let you guys know, go ahead, shoot us a quick take on the voicemail line. If you hear any news or if you want to comment on our last segment, 219-413-9405. And of course, we'll play your take back on our next episode. But um, here we go. News for the run. Starting off with the NFL trade deadline. Because the trade deadline was on election day, but the Detroit Lions, they added an all-pro to their defensive front. Crazy here that the league even allowed this to happen, is it especially the Cleveland Browns. It's just wild. But the Lions, they sent the Cleveland Browns a 2025 fifth-round pick and a 2026 sixth-round pick and received a three-time All-Pro, Zadarius Smith, along with a 2026 seventh-round draft pick. So, in other words, they absolutely fleeced the Cleveland Browns. They got robbed. They got robbed. They're not the only team that was making deals, though. Um, the Chicago Bears, they traded with Khalil Herbert, or they traded Khalil Herbert to the Cincinnati Bengals for a 2025 sixth or fifth round draft pick. Um, and a, a correction, correction, that's a seventh round draft pick. I know I just gave you all the numbers, but the Chicago Bears traded Khalil Herbert to the Cincinnati Bengals for a 2025 seventh round draft pick. And also, the New York Jets, they made some moves, too. They traded Mike Williams to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a fifth-round draft pick. The New Orleans Saints, they traded their four-time All-Pro Marshawn Lattimore to the Washington Commanders. And, man, that's a, that's a huge pickup for the Commanders, adding a solid, solid, solid cornerback um, on their secondary there. So, um, other things, too, some injuries happened last week that will go ahead and recap you on and refresh you on. So the Dallas Cowboys quarterback, Dak Prescott, he was injured in the fourth quarter last week against the Falcons. He suffered a hamstring injury. And as of now, multiple reports are saying that he'll miss at least four weeks of this season. So Cowboy C.D. Lamb was also hit with an injury last week against the Falcons game. It was a shoulder injury, but people did confirm that it was a sprained AC joint. And as of now, the reports are saying it's nothing that that is considered serious. It sounds brutal, but they said it's nothing that's considered serious, and he's expected to play next week against the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, and I'll give you guys some college football, some of the rankings too. I'll just give you straight rankings because um, I know I wasn't able to record on the episode on Monday. It was just crazy times, as you know. Um, a lot going on. Uh, but anyway, to explain, actually, before I jump into the rankings, because I need to hear this. Stood in, stood in line to vote. You know, I'm always saying, you know, everybody should vote, whatever. Regardless of who you vote for, do your thing. Um, stood in line. Five hours. Kid you not. Five hours was in line. So that is, if you're wondering, damn, we didn't get an episode earlier in the week. That's exactly why you did not get an episode. Five hours, bro. Five hours. It was crazy. Could not believe. I even, I, man, it was, it was wild. Anyway, let's go back to the sports that we were talking about. <laughs> College football playoff rankings, top five teams, Oregon at number one, Ohio State at number two, Georgia at number three, University of Miami at number four, University of Texas at number five in college football rankings. So Penn State is at number seven, Tennessee is at number, or I'm sorry, Penn State is at number six, Tennessee is at number seven. Alabama is at number 11. Boise State has crept up to number 12. You still got a few undefeated teams here. Indiana sitting at number 8. They're 9-0. BYU sitting at number 9, 8-0. And they're still holding on strong. And, of course, you know, the top five seeds are undefeated between Miami and Oregon. Those two teams are still undefeated. So crazy, crazy, crazy things going on in college football. I will say you can watch some good matchups. Texas plays Florida. Miami plays Georgia Tech. Michigan plays Indiana. Iowa State plays Kansas. Maryland plays Oregon. Another Big Ten matchup. I would say Florida State and Notre Dame, but Florida State is 1-8. So I can't even give y'all that game. But Washington and Penn State should be a good game that I'll probably keep an eye out for. And then Ohio State, they're probably going to smack up Purdue as they play. So um, I would say keep an eye out for those games, if anything. And then let's move over to the NFL because we got a couple of scores and um, just some games to cover that I know I'm going to watch coming up in the NFL. So today is Thursday Night Football. You're going to watch the Bengals and the Ravens. I'm excited for this. And I'll actually give you some more information on that come next segment because, you know, that's what we're going to focus on. 
Um, it'll be cool to listen to, even though if you already watched the game. So want to give that heads up. But my Falcons will take on the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. They got to get a win here. Um, it's a rivalry game, but we know the Saints, they've been having some struggles. They fired their head coach, and they're going through some, some things right now. They're struggling. <laughs> I'll say that much. Um, as far as some other games, going to watch the Chiefs and Broncos. Want to see what the Kansas City Chiefs do. The 49ers do play the Buccaneers. Should be a good game. The Washington Commanders versus the Pittsburgh Steelers is another game I'll keep an eye out for. Then the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Dallas Cowboys should be good. And Sunday night primetime slot, Detroit Lions versus the Houston Texans should be a phenomenal game. Um, especially since Nico Collins is rumored to come back and play this Sunday. And then for the Monday night game, you got the Miami Dolphins and the Los Angeles Rams, which should be a good game. But anyway, I'll, I'll say this, man. Let's focus on this Baltimore Ravens game um, and the Cincinnati Bengals. Now, I'm, I'm expecting the shootout here. In the previous game where these two guys played earlier uh, between the Ravens and, and the Bengals, it was a solid, solid game. Um, it was a bunch of yards, a bunch of receiving yards, a bunch of rushing yards, a very high-scoring game. It went to overtime, and, and I mean, it was it was phenomenal to, to watch, even though it was that early on in the season. So, the thing that I want to break down on, and, and what I want to kind of, you know, make fun here, because obviously, as I said, the game is about to come on, so y'all probably already know what happened and everything, and I'll try and give a recap, no promises on on that, but I want to go ahead and give y'all some of the bets I got. I don't know if they're going to hit yet. The game hasn't started. It actually starts in 15 minutes. Um, but last game, the Baltimore Ravens, they won 41 to 38. It was a crazy overtime thriller. Lamar Jackson threw for 348 yards, um, completed 28 out of his 42 passes, four touchdowns. Joe Burrow threw for five touchdowns, threw for 392 yards. Like It was a crazy shootout last time they matched up earlier. I think it was like week four or something like that. So, um, some of the bets just based on the statistics and things that I have seen and the the different patterns that's been going on. So I got, starting off, I got Joe Burrow over one and a half passing touchdowns, which means he's got to get two touchdowns. He got to get two passing touchdowns. Got Lamar Jackson over 225 passing yards. Lamar Jackson over 40 rushing yards. Jamar Chase over 70 receiving yards. And I'm going to tell you exactly why I even went with some of these bets here. So in, as far as the Jamar Chase thing, um, I got Jamar Chase over 70 receiving yards because this man has been a monster. He's averaging 79.7 yards per game in 2024. Um, he had a season high 193 yards versus Baltimore in week five where the Ravens ended up winning. So that gives me a little confidence there. Um, and the Ravens, they've allowed the third most reception yards per game to wide receivers. So an elite receiver like Jamar Chase, man, I, 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 I can't help but to believe that he'll get over 70 receiving yards. So he's seen 11 targets in back-to-back -back games. And, you know, hey, last game, it, or I think in the past two weeks, he's had over um, 75, so 75 receiving yards. So I'm like, it's, it's no reason Jamar Chase shouldn't get that one more time. So I'm feeling confident on that. Um, the, the Joe Burrow over one and a half passing touchdowns. I think this is a sweet line here um, because he hit this line six out of nine games. Three of the four games on the road. He had five passing touchdowns in the last matchup against the Baltimore Ravens, and I kind of think he just is going to repeat that. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, a fun game to watch, so two touchdowns should be a breeze. Also, to Ravens, that defense, they allowed the third most passing touchdowns in the NFL right now. So, hey, Joe Burrow, Bengals, do your thing. I'm hoping they get that done. Um, I got the Lamar Jackson, you know, 200 passing yards. He's thrown over 280 passing yards in five straight games. This man has been an absolute monster, so I got some faith there. And the Bengals, they play a lot of cover three. So I'm hoping that because they play a lot of cover three um, and seeing that Lamar Jackson ranks number one in passing against cover three defenses, I'm hoping he easily attains this 200-plus yards. So um, that should be a breeze there. Um, as far as that bet, and then I do have one more. I had the uh, receiving yards for – wait, no, no, no. I had the um, the rushing yards. Yep, the rushing yards for Lamar Jackson also. Um, so with the rushing yards, I, I'm a little confident here, and I think Lamar Jackson will definitely get the rushing yards uh, because this is a guy – obviously, we know what he can do with his legs, but above all, man, this, this dude – 
He gets it done in the air, and he's had 12 carries for 55 yards against the Bengals in that last matchup. If he gets anywhere near 12 carries, I think he definitely gets that 40 rushing yards, which should be a breeze. So um, I'm confident there. I'm confident there, hoping that one hit. And then just to kind of give you the odds on there, I'm using a bonus too. So it's a plus 540 odds. So it should be straight. And just to kind of reiterate everything I was saying, so I got Joe Burrow over one and a half passing touchdowns, Lamar Jackson over 225 passing yards, Lamar Jackson over 40 rushing yards, Jamar Chase over 40 or over 70 receiving yards. So this should be money. I gave you the information of why it should hit, and then I threw another quick parlay out there too. Um, it's just a, a quick little ladder, 50, 60, 70. I threw Zay Flowers for 60 or for 50 receiving yards. Derrick Henry, 70 rushing yards. Jamar Chase, 60 receiving yards. That should be easily attainable. Big game I'm hoping for. Maybe you'll hear the recap. Maybe you'll hear. We'll see. I'm going to try and give y'all the recap, but I'm going to leave y'all with this, man. Last thing here is, you know, as I've been going on to say, there's some teams in the NFL where – it's, it's just time to call it quits. You need to realize where you are. Realize that it's not good for you. Realize the season is pretty much over. And one of those teams that need to realize that the season is over for you is the Dallas Cowboys. You guys are three and five right now in the third in the NFC East, which means nothing because you're three and five. You're pretty much on a three game losing streak, possibly four game losing streak because you're about to go against the Philadelphia Eagles at home. But I mean, what does that mean when you're playing in Dallas? Nothing really, because they've still been losing consecutively while at home. So it's no big deal here. Eagles have been rolling. They look good so far in the past few weeks. So I'm pretty nervous for the Dallas Cowboys coming into this matchup. And I, I think it's going to turn out to where the Cowboys fall short again and end up on a four game losing streak. But it's time. It's time to wrap it up, man. It's time. Dak Prescott is going to be out for the next four weeks. You got Cooper Rush in. Cooper Rush is solid, but Cooper Rush is not about to lead the Cowboys on a playoff journey. Not happening at all. CeeDee Lamb is already banged up a little bit. Hopefully he can still get the receiving yards and receptions that he would love to have. As far as the Cowboys, bro, it's not looking good at all for what these guys can do. And then I'm looking at the matchups these guys have. Whoo, it gets ugly for the Dallas Cowboys. And this is the primary reason why I say it's over for the Dallas Cowboys. Time to start looking at next season. Time to start looking at the offseason and figure out what the hell you need to do differently from the past five years. Because coming up in the schedule, again, you got the Eagles, you're probably going to lose that. But you got the Houston Texans, you got the Commanders, you got the Giants where you could probably sneak in a win. But after that, you got the Bengals who are in a playoff pursuit right now. And it does not get easier because the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are in a playoff pursuit. Then you see the Eagles again and the Commanders once again. So it does not get any easier for the Dallas Cowboys. And I think it's time to hang it up, man. Y'all ain't got much going on. Three and five. I doubt you see the wild card at best, at absolute best. Maybe you win seven games. Maybe you can beat the Giants again. And you better beat the Panthers and take advantage of that if, when you played up. So at best, maybe seven games. That's at best, though. And that's me being generous. Truthfully, y'all might only win five or six games. But anyway, that's another story for another day. Um, I'm going to leave y'all with this, man. Appreciate you for hanging with me. I got to leave you on a positive note. And... The, the positive note that I'm going to say is just, you know, focus on yourself, man. Focus on yourself. Focus on what you got to do. Focus on what you got to take care of. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to be, you know, so focused on everything else and trying to be a good person and trying to, you know, worry about other things that's going on. But I, I find that sometimes we're nicer to others more than we're nicer than ourselves. So focus on yourself. Make sure you make yourself feel okay. Make sure you're nice and genuine to yourself and you, you treat others with respect. You treat others nice and, and uphold their standards. Uphold your own standards. Keep yourself disciplined. Like make sure you're good in your sense. So focus on yourself. Do what you got to do to make sure you locked in and you well taken care of. So I, I, nobody's going to take care of you better than what you can take care of yourself. So accept that. Receive that however you want to receive that. Other than that, man, hey, look, man, sorry for the one episode this week but as y'all know it's been a just a, a crazy week of just busy 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 type of stuff um obviously election week everybody just needs the week off for election like i, I i'm just a firm believer we, we all just need the week off for election just you know 
voting five hours crazy crazy just crazy 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 um other than that look man i'm about to here i'm about to watch this uh baltimore ravens and Bengals game um but until then man hey share this with a cousin a brother an aunt an uncle a niece a nephew a co-worker a friend a spouse a partner your side piece your main piece your um your, your whatever you gotta do whatever you gotta do send this to them promise you they're not gonna mind especially if i talked about their favorite team and um other than that man look we'll be back uh later on next week later on early next week and uh so on and so on and so on